name is Jake Brownson. Uh, the company is Branium Studios, and we make mobile games here in Portland, Oregon. While you guys have focused on games, are you seeing other opportunities where you guys might, might use your talent? I think that the, the, the combination of Farhad and myself, uh, the talents that, that we bring to, to complement each other really, really work well for games. Uh, Farhad has a great uh, design as aspect and he, uh, he's, he produces really beautiful, simple art that really fits the, the casual games that we do really well. Uh, and you know I'm, I do all of the code, and uh, you know I may, and th those two skills come together really well, and we work well together. And and a great way to, to use those skills is to make games. Um, we're certainly interested in in branching into other things in the future, uh, and it's it's really hard to plan out that far ahead. Uh, so, but certainly for the, the immediate future, we're, we have a strategy that we've put in place, and it's been working out well, and we're going to keep executing on that. Can you give us some examples of some of your products? The products that we've uh, we've been focusing on in our most recent line is uh, we started with Jumble Line Two, which is an anagram game. Uh, we've done a word search, a Sudoku, and a Klondike Solitaire, and we're about to release uh, a Spider Solitaire that was just uh, completed yesterday. And uh, these are all existing markets that have uh, audiences that are looking for great examples of these games, and there are in fact other examples of these games available. But we've 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 taken each of these examples and and done a and just beautiful art, made them very simple, you know, just the right number of options, and really thought through the control interfaces, and thought about how on a touchscreen device we can we can make a make improvements to the way interfaces for these games are generally done. Given that everybody's diving in, what are some of your big challenges as a mobile developer? Well, there's certainly a challenge in standing out, in in decide, in there's so many great ideas happening. How do you uh, get your great idea uh, to really stand out in that crowd? And uh, what, the way we've been doing that is we've been, ta we've been tackling uh, existing markets that we just feel haven't had a, the best example of what, they, what could be in that market um, has, that, that hasn't been created yet. And we've been uh, putting our heart and soul into our version of that and making the best art we can, the best user experience we can, and making it as simple as we can. And, and just really trying to tackle one uh, one specific app at a time and, and just make the best thing we can. And uh, s since you know, there, there are a lot of uh, products out there in the marketplace, but since there's even more uh, users of those products, and so if you can find a way to just capture a specific segment of, of, a, of a given market uh, in the mobile space, that's, that's, that's a great thing to do. So a lot of startups struggle with do we bootstrap? Do we go after funding? Maybe talk about how you guys have gone about that. Well, we, we've, uh, we definitely have bootstrapped, and uh, we've looked into doing funding. And I go to a lot of events, entrepreneur events, and I hear people talking about tr going for funding and, and looking for funding. And I, you know, for a while, I thought I was missing out on something. I felt like, oh, should I be doing that? I should be trying to, to do that, too. Um, but we just realized that you know, if you can avoid Going funding, you can just bootstrap. If you can just get an, another dollar, you know, one more dollar every month, you know, metaphorically speaking, and, you know, you can uh, you can start to grow something. And we've grown to the point over the past few months that we were able to bring on some employees, and uh, and we can then see additional growth from that. And it's been working out really well for us. You know, we've been able to keep control and keep ourselves motivated, and uh, and we've been able to really take the company in the direction that, that we want to do, and and keep a focus on the, the quality of the product. And, and then be able to reap the rewards as a result of that. Cool. Portland has a reputation for being a town of craftsmen. So maybe talk a little bit about your dedication to the craft of creating games. It's really important to us in, in anything we make that it's, uh, the primary focus is just making a good experience for the person that's going to be interacting with the thing we make. Uh, and I think that everything else that you desire out of business falls from that. And, and so I, I think the craftsman, um, craftsman is actually a really good term for, for how we look at the way we build our software. Uh, you know, we don't, we don't optimize for speed, we don't optimize for memory. We, the first thing I optimize for, well, we, we do optimize for those things, but, but the highest priority that I optimize for is uh, keeping the bugs out of our code. And, and, and we do that by kind of maybe writing code a little more slowly than we otherwise would and a little more carefully and, and deliberately. And we do the same thing with the art. I mean, we'll, we're constantly bickering over maybe one pixel here or there. Oh, this, should, this border should be a little thicker. Or, uh, and of course, Farhad's always right. But uh, you know, we, 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 
we slave over the sounds and just the way it feels like this, oh, this menu is coming up a little bit too slow. And we try and just get all of those things right. We try and uh, reduce the amount of options that we have on there. So we try and get our options down to one page, uh, you know, and, and we, tr we do a lot of work to try and, and decide which options are necessary and which aren't. And, and just make sure that, that we craft a great product for our customer. So imagine there's somebody who's crazy but not quite taken the leap into entrepreneurship. What advice do you have for them? Well, when we, uh, when we started this, this company, it, uh, it just started as um, making some games for fun on the side. Uh, and I just, we just kept making them a little better. And eventually, you know, iPhone came along and we saw how easy it was to to release in that market and get just distribution, and we did that, and we had a little bit of success, and it just kind of got kept getting more and more serious. And finally, I was up in Seattle at the time, and, and Farhad uh, just at, you know said, "So when are we gonna start doing this full time?" And the next week, I walked in and gave notice, and and, uh, and then 30 days later, I was down in Portland, and and you know that was about three years ago, and uh, and we've been going at it ever since. And I, I think the most important thing is just make something don't don't focus on oh but this isn't perfect and and i don't know if that's a good idea just make something and get it out there and it's a, it's great if it sucks because that's you got to get so many terrible things out before you can get your good thing out and it's the quicker you can get those terrible things out the quicker you'll get to the the one that really hits and and every time you make something you'll learn and you'll make the next one will be better and uh so the, the key again is just just complete something and get it out there no matter what it is what drives you guys to to want to give back to the community in that way? Well, it you know I, th I think it's one thing to to make great products that people really enjoy using and uh, and feel really proud about that. Uh, but I think the community in, in Portland, I'm just so proud of of living here and uh, and being able to partake in everything that it offers that uh, it just ma really makes you want to give back to it. And I think that uh, the educational process, you know, there's especially as an entrepreneur and a, and a technology person. I think that to expose kids at the high school age to, to, tech, to technology and to entrepreneurship is a great, uh, is a great experience for them. You know, if I had had that when I was in high school, that would have been fantastic.